Welcome, everybody. Uh, I'm Bonnie Church, and I'm honored to feature Dennis Franks as our guest today. Um, and I get to tell you a little bit about him, which is one of my favorite things to do. Dennis Franks is your quintessential Renaissance guy. That's how I like to describe him. He's a gifted athlete, formerly an all Big Ten player for the University of Michigan, and a key player for the Philadelphia Eagles, actually back in the 70s. Dennis and his friend, the legendary Vince Papali, helped to break a long-running losing streak for the Eagles in a pivotal game against the Washington Redskins. I'm sure you still remember that, Dennis. <laughs> that was yesterday. Yes. <laughs> that win paved the way for the team to go to the Super Bowl, and that story is retold in the Disney movie Invisible, so I'd encourage you all to rent that movie. It's a classic. And um, this year, Dennis and Vince Papali collaborated on a book, The Last Laugh, Vision to Victory, and the book offers practical steps for applying the tried and true principles of success to your life. And Mark Wahlberg wrote the foreword to the book, so you know it's got to be something special. So don't just rent the movie, buy the book, okay? After his career on the gridiron, Dennis Franks rose to prominence as one of the top 100 income earners in the network marketing industry. Dennis now serves as executive vice president for a multi-billion, with a B, dollar corporation, Market America Incorporated. He's helped with the acquisition and promotion of some multi-billion dollar product lines. Um, Dennis travels the world, guys. He's educating and inspiring an international sales force. And on top of all of that, he plays a mean guitar. <laughs> <laughs> Probably one of my favorite parts of Dennis Franks. So I'm indeed honored to have Dennis Franks here with us today because he's a very busy guy who managed to stay in shape and he's going to tell us how he does that. So Dennis, if you're good, I'm going to just start asking you some questions and you can give us the answers. How's that? Well, excellent. And thank you for that very kind introduction. I try not to uh, stop and read my clippings or focus <laughs> on what I did in the past. It's always about moving forward and what new frontiers you can create. But yes, I'm ready. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm your biggest fan, you know that, or one of them. <laughs> you have many. Okay, well, Dennis, you are in amazing shape, and we know you have the energy of 10 guys, okay? <laughs> we know you travel internationally across multiple time zones throughout the year, but you, you manage to stay in shape. And, you know, one would be tempted to think, just saying, okay, I'm just telling you what everybody's thinking, uh, do you think this guy just happens to be the lucky one who got those six-pack abs jeans? Um, <laughs> is that the case, Dennis, level with us? Okay. Well, the first and foremost, no, I don't have the ab gene. It's, it's something that I work on on a regular basis, um, core exercises or working on that area of the low back and gut are very, very important for uh, basically posture, longevity, and especially when you travel a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and so I do focus there. In fact, um, uh, recently I had a genetic test done and they have 22 obesity genes and I found out that I have 16 of them. <laughs> so at any time, if I let myself go, bam, 400 <laughs> pounds in no time. Um, you know, when I left football, um, I went up to 295 pounds and on a six foot two frame, that's a lot of people uh, or a lot of person uh, on one frame. And uh, when football was over, it was a hard transition for me to recognize I no longer needed to be that way. And, and today I'm virtually back to my high school weight of 228 pounds. And uh, it's sort of interesting uh, even at this weight, uh, people look at me as being large, but my bottom line is I haven't been this way in 40 years, <laughs> you know, so it's pretty, pretty good. Uh, you know, when I think about it, um, how it all works is I've, I've got this amazing focus on moving forward, about changing people's lives, about uh, sharing what I've learned with my own personal experience and losing 65 pounds and and going out in my own experience and, and starting from nothing uh, and creating a, a million dollar environment uh, in which our family has been privileged to live by. But, you know, when I think about this, I think about if I didn't 
reach out to make a difference for others, I think I would be stuck in an environment that would basically promote inactivity or promote not moving forward, which ultimately starts the regression of one's life. And I believe at my age, and, and I am a baby boomer, and I, I've got several years into being a baby boomer, uh, I think I, I'm starting a new chapter, never winding down. It's nice. all about moving and growing. Um, you know, the good Lord will tell me when it's time. Though. He'll give that subtle hint that it's, it's time to slow down. But the other thing that's really important in this process in going um, international and, and crossing time zones is, is how well you rest in the transition. Uh, there's certain supplementation that helps uh, maintaining your activity. One of the things that I do uh, coming in when I land into Asia or Australia or Europe, I'll immediately become engaged in, in exercise, you know, getting my body started back up, not allowing it to regress to where I came from, but moving into the new time zone. Uh, the other thing is, is I'll work very hard not to rest and try to get on that time zone as fast as possible. Um, in regards to uh, thinking about my energy level, I, I have to attribute it not only to diet, but I take a great deal of supplements. I probably take over 40 supplements a day. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, and, and most people won't do that uh, because, you know, they don't know what to take. Uh, but I think the supplement side, the exercise, and, of course, sleep, if I can master that, I could live to 200. <laughs> so, that sounds good to me. Yeah. yeah. But, well, you know what? I, you know, there's been a lot of speculation that we're supposed to be living to 120 or longer. Um, but there's so many things that come into play, and we, we don't even think about the environments that we're in. But, you know, I want to say is that in my case, I think it's a combination of things, but I'm passionate about life, and I attack the day, and I think I attribute a lot of my fitness, a lot of my mental clarity to moving forward. Yeah, so despite your genetics, you can overcome the genetics with your diet and lifestyle choices. And uh, I know 15 years ago, Dennis, you were working alongside Dr. Sherry Lieberman, who's the author of Dare to Lose, and you identified the fundamentals of getting and staying in shape. And then you and Dr. Lieberman, as I understand it, engineered the Transitions Lifestyle System, now known as the TLS Weight Loss Solution. Mm -hmm. And I know you're big on fundamentals, and that's a system that incorporates the fundamentals of staying well. So could you kind of share with us the TLS weight loss solution basics? Because it sounds like that's how you live your life. Right. Um, the first thing I recognized uh, during my weight loss journey, and this is what evolved ultimately to meeting Dr. Lieberman, and evolving into the Transitions Lifestyle System, which evolved into the TLS Weight Loss Solution. But what I learned is that I failed miserably on multiple diets. Um, it wasn't that diets didn't work short term, but after losing uh, in the first couple, three weeks a month, it was very easy to gain back because mm -hmm. Uh, the diets that I were on, they were not able to sustain me in a lifestyle. And so the phrase that I coined is, um, you know, weight loss isn't magic, it's science. Uh, the fact that, uh, you know, diets don't work and lifestyles do is a theme in which the Transitions Lifestyle System or the TLS Weight Loss Solution lives by. Now, there are many ways, again, you can lose weight. Uh, today, you know, there are, are certain things that are popular with the um, fasting diets and the ketogenic diets, but ultimately, it will all evolve back into the lifestyle. Right, uh, TLS lifestyle. Yeah, mm -hmm. you, you don't want to go one extreme for too long. You, if, you, if you can comply with a program that you're losing weight with, that's great stick with it. All I'm saying is that when you get to your goal or you start moving in the right direction, be sure you transition to the, to the lifestyle, which we promote. And, and fundamentally, Bonnie, and, and why I'm so passionate about it is because TLS always works. Yeah. Uh, because we work with the science of the body, the chemistry of the body. Um, we're all about new favorite foods. 
Um, Dr. Lieberman uh, was a bit a big advocate of low glycemic index eating, and she was really talking more about low glycemic impact eating, meaning a combination of low and medium uh, glycemic index foods. And, and for those of you that don't know, when we're talking about glycemic index, it's nothing more than a measurement of a food, uh, specifically a carbohydrate and how fast it will raise your blood sugar level. Uh, because if it raises too fast, it starts triggering a lot of body mechanisms um, so that it can control the amount of sugar that's going through your body and so that your muscles and your body can actually uh, utilize it. And of course, that goes with the release of the hormone insulin that helps um, uh, make it all work. But you know, so many people don't realize uh, today, like for example, eating a bagel is the absolute worst thing you can do in the morning. I mean, right. uh, people that eat breakfast cereal with milk, not the best choice. Uh, high, high in sugar, uh, although they'll say it's fortified uh, with certain vitamins and they'll say there are, is some protein and there's some fiber. But, um, you know, that side of the, the picking the right foods you know, every time you sit down, especially at breakfast, look for protein, look for fiber uh, to start your day because you're going to be more in a fat burning environment than a fat storing environment with starting with sugars. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing that's powerful that we have to learn is that the more muscle mass that you have on your body, uh, the more calories that you'll burn. So if you're looking to eat more, you know, move your body composition, you know, to be more lean. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people, you know, don't know where to go to get tested for body composition. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't even want to know their body composition. <laughs> uh, oh, my God, you know. And, and, and I don't believe in BMI um, measurements. I, okay. I do believe in actual, um, you know, testing. Uh, you know, you can use the skin folds, um, you can use the electronic impedance machine, you can do the water dunking. There's a lot of ways that you can do whatever you start with, just measure yourself from there. So lean body mass is a big part of what we do, which evolves into exercise. And people say, oh, no, I hate to sweat, all that good stuff. Uh, but listen, folks, a habit, just, just do it. I, I can't tell you how many years, you know, I'm programmed to wake up you know, do whatever I do in the morning, take my nutrition and go to the gym and get it out of the way. I can't wait till the end of the day because too many things happen in my day. So it has to be first and done. Uh, It's part of my sanity also, a stress Mm -hmm. relief. Uh, You name it, it helps. But it's my time. So activity and working on lean body mass is part of my daily routine. Uh, Other things, supplementation, Bonnie, uh, we're all different. Um, So customization is critical. I like the Transitions Lifestyle System because we do customize. uh, We refer to it as the most customizable weight management program on the planet because one size does not fit all. And we're not going to tell you what to eat. We're going to teach you how to eat um, so that you can live and make good choices, which really leads to the fourth part, which is education. And if you believe that success is a choice, so is life. Everything you do in life, um, they say literally over 100 choices a day, easy people make. And so if you combine low glycemic impact eating with basically exercise, focusing on body composition, the right supplementation to get your body mechanisms to work at peak performance. And then finally, keep educating yourself. I think you've got the foundation for a lifetime of health and excellent body composition and weight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it with many of my friends, many of my clients who have uh, lost weight and just optimized their health with TLS. So I'm so thankful for that system Um, because I know it incorporates the the soundest biology of weight loss. But what about the mind, Dennis? It's one thing to have a gym membership. It's quite another, I know personally, to get to the gym. How does one cultivate the mindset needed to reach one's weight loss and wellness goals? 
what a big area for us to talk about today. And for everybody listening, understand that mindset is the beginning of everything. Uh, in fact, uh, we just completed a 30-day mindset mentoring program, which was a great experience for me, uh, for you, and for the people that we worked with. It was a big difference for so many. But when I start thinking about a winning mindset, you know, for example, you know, I have a t-shirt that says win the day. I have a t-shirt that says success is a choice. I have things that are constantly feeding my mind that it is a can-do attitude and a can-do approach to every day. Um, jumping into the fire every day is important. Testing myself. Um, winning or losing, it strengthens my mind because People may feel bad if they don't get the outcome that they want, Bonnie, but ultimately, if I don't get the outcome, then I'm able to move to understand why I didn't get that desired outcome. Uh, so it's a great learning experience. So there is no fear uh, when you approach mindset. Uh, there shouldn't be. It's only experiences. But you have to have that um, inside voice that's going to constantly work with you. But that has to be supported by the things around you. Um, God, we talk about the naysayers. We talk about negative influences around us. Uh, it's so important if you have decided to change your life. Uh, you have to start with changing your mindset. And sometimes that means changing the environment that you're in, changing the activities that you do each day, creating new habits. And, you know, here's what I don't like about people today, and specifically about millennials. Um, it's not that, I, and I like millennials. I have a couple daughters that are millennials, and I love my daughters. But what I don't like about people today is they don't understand making small choices or small changes on a daily basis and being consistent with that ultimately over a period of time will make big changes. And I can only tell you about, you know, two people that I know. One was an individual that started the new year by saying, I'm basically going to add 2,000 steps a day to my activities and I'm going to cut my diet down by 100 calories a day. Okay, uh, another guy that I know bought a new television, uh, you know, one of those 80 inches, a big one, as big as a wall, you know, and he was going to focus on the food channel and he was going to become a good cook. Well, he sure did. He not only became a good cook, but he added an extra 100 calories a day. And between the both of them, you didn't see a big change in the first year. But 18 months into it, you started to see a difference. And at 31 months, and this was amazing, going into its, the third year, all of a sudden, the gentleman that bought the TV and went into the food channel was 34 pounds heavier than the gentleman that took 100 calories out a day and walked 2,000 more steps and added some positive things into this life, he lost 20 pounds. And the bottom line, he was promoted, his income increased, everything was different, but it didn't happen immediately. It was a small change in their lives that made it so important. And I think that's part of the mind setting that we're talking about, those small changes on a daily basis. Yeah. Yeah, and it's amazing how you set the trajectory of your life with the decisions that you make today. And um, I, what I love about the book, it talks about um, the last laugh. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys will need to get it. But it talks about when the pain of where you're at, if, if the pain of where you're at doesn't exceed the pain of making a change, then you're not going to make a change. And I know, like, I've been mentored personally by Dennis Franks, thank God. But uh, I know the pain of looking in the mirror <laughs> <laughs> and seeing what I'm seeing exceeds the pain of getting to the gym. So I'm applying those principles in the last laugh, Dennis. And thank you for that wonderful illustration of someone who made a decision and the outcome was not that great. But uh, <laughs> okay, I know you talked a little bit about what you do, like when you land after an international yeah. travel, but could you just kind of outline sure. for us what you do on a daily basis? What does the day in the life of a very busy guy who still stays in shape look like? Well, you know, I, I want to go back to my mornings, and uh, I want everyone to know that I don't 
lift heavy weights anymore. I gave that up. Um, when I stopped moving people physically for a living, I evolved. Uh, so size wasn't as important to me to functionality and longevity. So I do more exercising with my body weight. Um, people, you know, ask me, what do you do? Well, you know, I do 100 push-ups a day. Um, I, I think it's important that you maintain a good upper body strength as long with your core exercises. I use ropes. I use sled pushes. You know, I use a medicine ball. Um, I use what they call a TRX. Um, it's basically bands that hang and you use your body weight either to pull up, push down. Uh, amazing. Uh, I work with planks on a regular basis. Um, something as simple as what they call farmer's carries, where you put, you know, everybody's different. It might be like 25 pounds in each hand and you walk, you walk, you know, 50 yards, um, just like getting used to carrying groceries or, or your suitcase when you go to the airport. All of these things really work. Um, cardio wise, um, on my training days, I use a trainer, I do a minimum of 20 minutes of cardio. And this is either going to be um, elliptical, it's going to be the rowing machine, or it's going to be a Stairmaster. I, I can't run like I used to. Um, you know, I'll fast walk uh, at four miles per hour at an incline, you know, on there. And that incline will be anywhere between five and six. Uh, it's, it's important that you change things up. But all of these things are part of a regimen that you evolve and you change up. On the days that I'm not actively training, I increase my cardio to 30 to 35 minutes. Um, always include some stretching. Every day is a core day. And I try to exercise five days a week, and I stay active on weekends. Um, so some people say, gosh, you, you overdo it. I say, oh, no, no, it's a lifestyle. It's great to be active uh, and move around. At that point, you know, I'd go into the office. And, yes, I went into the office around 1030 or 11 o'clock, uh, better than banker's hours. Um, but, but I would work uh, throughout the day, probably taking anywhere between 10 and 15 calls, uh, working through three to four meetings, uh, and then taking my real work time, which is after work. I would stay 5 to 7 o'clock those last two hours after everybody left, was probably my time to catch up and get ready for the next day. And I, I, I really recommend that. Uh, some of us are list makers. I happen to be one. I rest better at night uh, when I know what I have to accomplish the next day. So working from five to seven after people are winding down um, is a good thing for me. you got to sort of find your, your place there. Uh, I try not to sit ever longer than 30 minutes without getting up. Um, people that sit too long uh, develop back problems. Um, if you don't have a strong core area, um, you're going to have back problems. And, and this is one thing for those of you that have lower back problems. If you start working on those muscles, uh, it's really going to help tremendously. Uh, basically, I have dinner about between 7 and 8 o'clock. Um, and usually that's my last meal. However, however, my weakness is ice cream. I love ice cream, uh, specifically gelato. <laughs> so <laughs> once or twice a week, I'll have it. Uh, I think that's good. And one other thing that I found out, which is a treat, which is a, a medium glycemic impact is M&M peanuts but you can't have too many of them. Um, but I laugh a lot. I play music. Uh, you know, uh, it, it's funny today, you know, uh, I'll, I'll spend a, an hour playing my guitar, but this is the greatest thing. I bought a drum set. I bought a piano. I bought a bass guitar. So in my house today, Bonnie, I have a stage and it's all set up. Um, to play multiple interest, uh, instruments. I love music. I'm going to play that forever. And I listen to this. This is the best. I bought a karaoke machine. And when you sing into the karaoke machine, now technology is so good. If you sing flat or sharp, it'll be a voice adjustment so yeah. you don't sound too bad. How about that? So, I love that. Yeah, <laughs> next, next time you come over, we'll have to put you singing. To your okay. favorite. Okay, <laughs> I want to play a little bass too. <laughs> but, but you know, when it really comes down to it, you know, those are my days. And 
even when I'm off, it's working in the yard, it's doing, you know, I'm a great honeydew kind of guy. Um, you know, uh, I, I'm blessed with a great wife. Uh, we're going into our 37th year uh, of being married. Uh, Nancy has helped me build uh, the business, uh, helped me grow as an individual. I give much of my success, uh, gratitude to my wife, Nancy, um, you know, who has just been amazing. She's allowed me to grow. Um, so she kept my relationship strong. She kept the kids knowing who their father was so that when we got together, it was quality time. Uh, it was always quality time. It wasn't, a, you know, time that for it was every day, every minute. Um, I know a lot of people that have a lot of time at home that spend zero time with their children. Um, but the, the time that we had, it was always coming home from travel to my home and it was there. Uh, it wasn't a problem. Uh, so that's sort of how my life goes. And I try, I travel probably, oh, you should know I'm a million mile flyer, um, with American airlines. And I have over 900,000 miles with, uh, Delta. So I should be a 200, uh, 2 million mile flyer sooner than later. I don't know if that's good or bad, but it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, but you know what's good is you do all that travel, but you stay in great shape. So I'm going to kind of sum up, and you correct me if my, I'm wrong. Okay. The secrets of success. You get up in the morning, and you just exercise, go to exercise or go to the gym with gusto. Yeah. <laughs> You um, balance your blood sugar one meal at a time. I guess that glycemic impact eating. So you make you make positive choices one meal, one snack at a time. But you don't mind having a little gelato every now and then, <laughs> or having hey, yeah. them with peanuts. Or some I think that's awesome. on occasion. You know, I'm going to have a cocktail every once in a while too. Yep. There you go. And um, but you have balance in your life. You know, you're playing music. You're making it a, a part of your life. You spend time with your beautiful wife, and I have been to your amazing home. I mean, that is a great, great crib, <laughs> great place to hang out with the family. Um, you're big on education. I do know that, how educating people on how to eat. Um, and, and I love the TLS lifestyle. It's sustainable. Just like you said, people are not going to be able to sustain keto. They're not going to be able to sustain intermittent fasting. But though they can transition into the transitions lifestyle, and that is sustainable, and it creates longevity in people's lives. Okay, I have one last question, though. I'm thinking about the people, the baby boomers. I love that we still have baby in our description. <laughs> the, ba the baby boomer guy that's kind of growing the gut. You know, we're at that age where women grow beards and men look pregnant. <laughs> you know? um, the, guys, the guys that are growing the gut, what three exercises could they start with at home that would give them the best overall body workout? If they're not going to the gym, they don't have access to the equipment, what can they do at home? And, you know, at the TLS lifestyle eating, of course, but what three exercises could they do at home that would have give them the greatest benefit? Okay, well... That is quite the question. Um, first, just clarification, uh, abs are created in the kitchen, um, if you've never heard that. So we know diet is one thing. Uh, but now what I would recommend, a chair is a great tool to use for in-house workouts. Um, you know, you can do squats in a chair where you stand up and sit down and just touch your rear end to the seat and back up. Uh, it's also a safety mechanism for you. I recommend a hard back chair or a hard seat, not your 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 lounge chair, okay, per se, like your kitchen chair. Uh, I also recommend, uh, in addition to squats, I recommend that you work on, you know, some sort of activity on the floor where you're working your core. Um, there are many ways, um, traditional sit-ups, you know, are something you can do, but I don't recommend those right away. I recommend what they term as crunches, where you bring your 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 flat your 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 legs are up at a, a flat soles and they're they're up on an angle, and you bring your body up 45 degrees. You lift up. Uh, do not pull on the back of your head. It's better to put your arms across just holding that up. Now you can also, after you get done doing crunches, lay on your stomach 
and then do what they call a plank, where you just put up on your arms and you have your body straight and you work up to holding that for 60 seconds. Uh, if you do that, like during commercials, if you're watching the news or something, uh, it's a great way to get done. Um, the other thing that I like, I travel with bands. Um, you know, they're like surgical bands. They're very inexpensive. They throw into a suitcase really easy. And with the surgical bands, you can basically stand on them and start working your biceps. You can work your traps and your overhead presses, as well as behind the shoulder, you can even work on your, uh, your pecs, uh, which is a bench press, uh, or you can do a push-up. But those are the areas that are going to be most important to you. Now, I will say something that I'm not as good as I would hope to be, and that is my flexibility. Um, you know, compared to Nancy, I, my wife, she is so flexible. Uh, I am not. And I don't know whether it's just me. Uh, genetically, I'll go back and blame my genetics or the lack of spending enough time. But uh, as we grow older, especially individuals that are, in, I, by the way, I'm 66. I'm going to be 66 this year. Um, you know, at this point, you don't want to overdo anything. You know, when you get into it, you want to gradually grow in these exercises. And, and I will say this to everyone. Don't attack exercise. Grow into exercise. It's more important to consistently do something every day than to go kill yourself on a day and then, you know, hate it. Uh, I'd rather you exercise for five minutes and go to six minutes the next day and seven minutes the next day than not, you know, doing it an hour and then not coming back for two weeks because you got sore. But yeah. that's what I would recommend, Bonnie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so squats and planks mm -hmm. and crunches. Right. And, uh, and then, um, you know, start slow in bands. I right. Like those are mm -hmm. real practical solutions. Well, Dennis, I know that I can't keep you forever. Um, so uh, unless you have something else to say, I'm going to uh, sign off for us. I, I do want to say something. Uh, you know, I really want to encourage people to read The Last Laugh. It's an easy read. It'll take you, you know, four or five hours or whatever. It's 200 pages. But uh, what Vince and I have created uh, really is something, a foundation for people to live by across all generations. It's the kind of book that you want to read and then share it with somebody. And you can get it at shop.com. You can get it at uh, amazon.com. You can go to dennisfranks.com and get it. But uh, the bottom line is it's good stuff that will last generations. Um, and the Victor's Code uh, is just amazing when we start talking about the vision that people have and the courage that you got to have in valor. And you talk about your passion through vehemence and, and moving forward through veracity and being honest with you. And then vitality and mental strength through vigor, you're on your way. And then finally it's victory uh, and what it's all about. What does it all mean? And then it's interpreted by some amazing people that are very successful. And I think their, their input as to how the code has helped them is amazing to just digest and see how it's affected other people. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Dennis. And um, again, get the book. Visit DennisFranks.com and don't forget the to give the uh, don't forget to give the book a good review. It deserves it, and Dennis, you deserve that too. Thank you so much for being with us, and we'll sign thank off. You. All right, thank you.